think we've all accepted by now that our society is messed up. It is a cruel place where injustice is rampant. Every day we log on to Facebook, switch on our televisions, or simply read a newspaper to find a rising death toll, war crimes against humanity, a young woman raped or murdered, a transgender bullied, a young boy committing suicide because of his grades. Everything sucks right about now, let's put it simply. We see all this and we complain about it, don't we? The question here arises, why don't we use those same words to bring about change? I'd like to ask all of you to raise your hands if you have a favorite character. Everyone in the audience? I want you to think about what makes that character so great for you. Just take a moment. Because for me, my favorite character is Leia Organa from Star Wars. Why? Because as a child, as a young girl, I grew up surrounded by male superheroes. Be it Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, they're who I wanted to dress up as as a kid. Everyone told me that a young girl should be a princess, but that's not who I was. I wanted to be a superhero, and I wanted to save the world. When I saw Star Wars for the first time, I saw a woman going from being a princess to being a general that commanded the entire rebellion fleet. She stood toe to toe with her brother, Luke Skywalker, against their father, Darth Vader. And the best part was, she was an equal to her brother, to the main character. She even surpassed him in some elements. Princess Leia changed my perception about my gender. And she showed me that a princess can be just as strong as any other superhero. Characters. They can change your perception about who you are, how you view yourself, and how you view everyone around you. So the question here arises, how do you write and how do you create a character that changes perceptions? Well, I believe that there are two versions of yourself. One that is living your life, and the other person that's on the outside, that other version of you that's on the outside and looking in and taking notes. That version of you has the potential to be a writer. Because you know what? Writers have a really unique superpower. We can change your perceptions like that. We create stories and characters that change who you are, that connect to you, and that's Really cool, because you know what? We're kind of the unsung heroes here. Nobody really appreciates us. They look at the director, they look at the actors, but they don't realize that the people behind the scenes making this all work are the writers. So here's the thing, I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but I've been in this industry for a while now, about 10 years, give or take. Writing started out as a hobby for me. And to this date, I have no formal education in the field. What I do, and will always have, however, is a love for stories and the compulsion to dive deep into various fandoms. Basically, guys, I really like watching television. I am a 25-year-old who has nothing better to do than watch a lot of television. I started out writing fan fiction on Tumblr, on fanfiction.net, on MuggleNet, to where I am now. You know, it's it's humbling and it's cool because no matter how big or small a project I've taken, it's always been really near and dear to my heart. Why? Because they've made a difference. With Burka Avenger, it was all about crafting Pakistan's first female superhero. Someone that people could look up to, young kids everywhere could look up to and learn from. She preached morals. She allowed children to think and learn between what's right and what's wrong. We took, she was, a, she was a character that took the burqa, which is a symbol generally associated with oppression in the West. 
She took that symbol and she changed it into a symbol for justice. She, you know what the best thing about her was? She never used violence to accomplish any means. Her victories were always accomplished by her surroundings, by her environment. She used her brain. She never harmed anyone, not even the villains. Using peace to bring about an end to violence. The best part was she, she was a stark difference from her nemesis, Baba Banduk. They were both, and it's funny because they both had the same origin story. They were both orphaned as young children. They were both wronged by society. And one came out of it as a symbol for justice and good. And the other, evil, everything that was evil was Baba Banduk. Joker was right when he told the Batman that all it takes is one bad day. So the question here arises, how did a character like Burka Avenger impact society? I'm gonna share a little story with you. A while back, I went to visit a school that was teaching underprivileged children for free. And the best part was, they were using Burka Avenger episodes as a tool to make kids learn basic human rights, etiquettes, right and wrong. My episode, something I helped create, was being taught to educate the kids of Pakistan, kids who would become our future. That's something I'm, I'm never gonna forget because that is the reason I became a writer, to make a change. Another really cool thing is that characters don't have to be specifically contained to one medium to make a difference. Look at what Marvel did with Kamala Khan. She was created to kind of put a face to Muslims everywhere in a time when Muslims are generally perceived with two labels, dangerous, terrorists. Which is why, as a character, Kamala Khan was a person first and a Muslim second. She was a young girl living in America, a Pakistani girl living in America, and struggling with that identity of what it meant to be in a, a Muslim in an age where we're considered dangerous. But not just that. She could relate to young adults everywhere. Because you know why? Because everybody struggles to be different. Everybody wants to make their parents proud. And everyone's a huge fan of Wolverine, let's be honest. Kamala Khan was created to give a face to Muslims everywhere, to co be correctly represented on the small screen and, and hopefully, God willing, on the big screen. Her impact on society wasn't subtle because she was created at a time where Trump had just announced his candidacy for the elections and hate crimes against Muslims were on an all-time high to the point that buses in San Francisco were being defaced with anti-Muslim propaganda. One fine day, people are waking up and they see those same buses and they're being replaced. The messages on it are being replaced with images of Kamala Khan, with messages like, stop the hate, stamp out bigotry. She became the face for minorities everywhere to take a stand and fight against these hate crimes. Characters can make a difference, and so can their stories. They will compel you. Do you know why? Because they're relatable. A strong character is relatable, and it is what draws that fine line between a good character and a great character. And how is it that people make such amazing characters and stories that can connect with you? They're taken from real life examples. Look at characters like Hermione from Harry Potter, Chandler from Friends, or even Quasimodo from, Hunch from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. All of these characters have aspects that you can relate to. Why is it that we can connect to Hermione and her drive to be the best and achieve everything in life? Why is it that we struggle to fit in just like Quasimodo did? or that we always feel like we're down on our luck, like Chandler, because they're taken from real life examples. That's what writers do, that is what I do. I take examples from everything around me, 
what happens to me, what happens to my friends, what happens to my family, and I modify them to fit the narrative. An example is oh, an episode of Burka Avenger. We wrote this episode where Baba Bandhuk, her arch nemesis, kidnaps Burka Avenger and defeats her. It was a different episode, why? Because the kids ended up saving the day. The inspiration for that episode came from a slightly dark place and a slightly dark event that happened to our society. The tragedy of APS still haunts us. And unfortunately, many kids were a part of that tragedy. My cousins, unfortunately, were a part of it too. They told me about it later on, and they told me about how the kids in that school, against tremendous odds, showed bravery and saved the lives of their classmates. That inspired me. I took that story, and I modified it to fit the narrative. But you know what? It's not all touch and go. Success as a writer doesn't just fall onto your feet. But the thing is, you have a great gift. You have the gift of words. What do words do? You use those words and you make a story. The best part about writing is there's no set rules. There's just, there needs to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. It needs to mean something to you. What you're writing has to resound with the audience because it matters to you. And in the age that we're living in now, it's very easy to make yourself heard. We have platforms, we have social media, like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. So upload a status calling the injustices in our society. The power of social media is constantly underestimated. And we saw that power when people from all walks of life came together to honor the memory of Mashal Khan a young person and a writer who this, part, this talk is partly dedicated to. So go out there, use social media, use that power, reach out to groups like Girls at Dhabas, Dastan, even Animer Welfare Associations. You can make a change. If you think humor is your weapon of choice, use it, upload a video, upload memes, anything that can make a difference because your words can make a difference. You can use those words to call out the injustices in your society. You can end stigmas everywhere. You can make a difference. Before I end my talk, I'm almost done, I promise, I'd like to dedicate it to the memory of Carrie Fisher, a woman who not only inspired me on screen as Princess Leia, but off screen as well. As many of you all know, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. But she never let that weigh her down. In fact, she became a strong advocate for mental illness everywhere. As someone like me, who's been diagnosed with both depression and anxiety, she taught me that it's okay to be different, that it doesn't make you wrong. There's nothing wrong about it. You're just different, and that's good. There's no shame at admitting that there's something wrong with you. She taught me that it's okay and that you should seek help. So, as I end my talk, I'd like to reach out to anyone and everyone and tell them, don't be ashamed of who you are. You're special in your own right. So rise up against that stigma. Fight back, be strong, and get help. There's no shame in seeking help, and there's no shame from taking help from the support around you. I did, and it made such a difference. And you know what the best part is? Writing became a, a source of strength and release for me. In an industry where, you know, it's not easy being someone with, a, with anything that's different about you. You're often stigmatized in the media industry because of it. But be strong. Look at me, I mean, I'm struggling I'm not struggling, I'm juggling five jobs. I'm juggling university. I'm juggling a social life. I go to the gym five times a week. Yeah, I, some people might say I have no life, but I'm enjoying this busy aspect of my life. I'm in a happy, I'm in a loving relationship, and life's great. Look, living with mental illness is tough. It's a hard fight. 
but it's worth it. I'd like you all to be strong. Anyone, just be strong and make a change, make a different difference to our world. Thank you.